Today we will be starting the Revell 125 scale Peterbilt 359 conventional. This will be my first Peterbilt that I've built because I've built three semi um, trucks previously and they were all Kenworths. I expect this kit to be similar to a sister kit, the um, Kenworth W900 Aerodyne. Um, there is a separate video on that. So it should be a low parts count, easy fitting, almost no flashing. Um, and the parts should pretty much slot in almost like a snap tight. So I am expecting the kit to be um, somewhat easy. Here is the box open and this is one of the few boxes that actually has a cardboard um, support frame so the items don't get crushed. So let's take a look at the parts. Here is the molded in white, the chairs, the back of the wheels, intake pipes, radiator, the diesel engine block, fifth wheel, some more wheel backs, engine parts, pulleys, compressors, turbo unit, some other uh, engine parts which I can't make out. Here is the um, one piece frame. Unlike AMT that actually has, where you have to glue each and every single uh, cross brace. This one is one piece, so I'm correct that it's a low parts count. Should make for an easy build. Um, the interior tub with the sleeping um, comforter and pillow already molded in. That should, the details are, uh, are very highly molded or stand out, very prominent, so um, should be able to detail that pretty well. This is the first time the fenders, the front fenders are separate from the hood. These are not chrome, these um, fenders over the rear wheels. Air tanks. Here is the body, one piece body with the sleeper and the cab together. So that should be easy to paint. Here is the hood and the fenders I just showed you. Usually the fenders come one piece with the hood. Wow, look at that prominent stripe or molding down the center. Okay. Here are the tires. They're hollow and um, See how it folds because they're so final. That's the only thing about these Revell. I really don't like their tires. I wish they were more solidly molded so they don't bend or crease. They remind me of dragster slicks when they're under acceleration. But there is no a name brand on these. I don't see a name on them. So. so let's take a look at the chrome. So you have nice shiny chrome wheels. The mirrors, the braces and struts are all one piece. The radiator with the, um, let me turn it over, with the headlights in one piece. Looks nice. I have to leave the plastic between them so don't scratch the, the chrome plating. The uh, tanks, exhaust shields, the air cleaner tops, the diamond plate, Grid, the battery covers, front bumper. Probably have to uh, put the headlight lenses in. Here is the clear lenses. Instruction sheet. The decals. I took a look in the instruction sheet and it looks like maybe the later issues don't have the radiator covers because it seems like there's a decal for the radiator cover, but I don't seem to have it. So nice American flag, some stripe. I probably will leave most of the decals off. Unlike the Kenworth, the Peterbilt, the emblems are a little small. So instead of painting them, I think I'm going to use a decal this time because usually I like to um, dry brush them. So let's take a look at um, instruction sheets. Seems simple enough.
So here's what I'm talking about. Seems like there's a radiator um, cover. It covers a radiator during the winter time or some kind of decal over it, but I don't see the decal. So I'll look again. But anyway, I'm going to uh, wash the parts and then separate them by color. I think I already know what I want to paint it. Probably the, um, it'll be flat black truck with maybe a gloss red frame. And then the mud flops maybe either black or red because the um, flap decals are white, so I can't leave them white. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, this is where we are. I finished painting the pieces and I'm pretty much halfway through some of the sub assemblies. I was so uh, excited to start the model that I did not videotape um, after the parts were painted, but this is where we are at now. So, like I said, the body is in Rossolium 2X flat black because I wanted a flat look for the body. Black came out really good. I had to lay two coats down because um, the first time I sprayed it, it was not a consistent spray. Um, some of it got a nice coating while other parts just had a light misting, so I had to do a second coat. So um, everything is mostly flat black, the mud flaps, the radiator is flat black so that when you lay the um, radiator fan, the gloss black, there'll be a nice contrast. Um, the interior is in testers um, beige, I believe, basically like a tan. Um, the dash and the instruments, I have to um, paint them black and then dry brush them or put chrome rings on them. Uh, shifter is in Rust-Oleum metallic aluminum or aluminium if you're in Europe, that's how they pronounce it. Um, steering column, one of the uh, turbo intake units, steering wheel. Now the chassis, I originally wanted to spray gloss red, but I have a lot of um, spray cans around that are almost done, so they're just enough to spray parts, but they may not be enough to spray for, say, a car body or a truck body. And the last thing I want to do is run out of paint because then you have to buy another can and that stops the whole production, the whole process. And worst of all, sometimes near the end, the spray can starts to sputter and then you get a really bad paint job. So instead of painting a gloss red, I had some br testers bright red. So the chassis is bright red instead of gloss red that I originally wanted to a uh, paint and then some of the suspension is gloss black axles um, intake is rust-oleum metallic aluminum um, engine block is rust-oleum sunburst yellow it was not a 2x um, but interesting enough right after I painted the diesel engine block the uh, spray clogged on me. So I had a lot left in the can. I hardly used it and then it just clogged on me. So I had to throw out the can. But as you can see, um, I painted some detail, flat black for the radiator hoses, chrome alternator, chrome pipes for some of the turbochargers. Um, pulleys are gloss black while the uh, belts are flat black. Shock absorbers are blue. So I made it kind of colorful because I wanted different colors and some contrast. So the bright red actually looks a little bit orange. So it kind of looks like a Harley Dean truck because it's got the orange and black instead of the gloss red. And the chrome, interestingly enough, I wanted to dull it down. I didn't want it to be so bright because the body was flat black. So I hit it with um, a spray of matte finish. So the chrome is not as shiny. It kind of looks like a cast alloy look. So everything's toned down. So that's one of the pieces. Here is the other piece. The radiator. It's not as shiny. It looks like cast. And then here are the wheels. They're already assembled. They're not as shiny, but they still look cool. Interior, like I said, was brown, but I wanted the seats with some contrast and offset, so they're flat black. Fenders are also flat um, black, they will be attached to the hood. 
Um, these fenders for the rear wheels are also flat black. Fifth, the fifth wheel, I think, was flat black or maybe it was gloss black. It's hard to tell. So from here, I will continue assembling it. And I'll be back after all the several assemblies are done and right before I put it all together. So some of the things like, you know, detailing and highlighting the instrument panel, things like that. But I just want to show it to you before I went any further because I did not show you after I spray painted. So really colorful um, frame and chassis. The tanks are semi-gloss or gloss black. Pretty colorful. Shock absorbers are um, testers metallic blue. So sometimes when it's small parts like shock absorbers or engine parts, I try to use up all my cans. So I usually use Rust-Oleum, but I do have a lot of testers uh, left over that may not be enough to spray a complete car body. So that's why I use them for like shock absorbers, parts here and there. Okay. Forgot to mention that also the headline of the interior I sprayed was also that um, sand beige, tester sand beige, same as the interior tub. So that's done. I wanted to show you the interior before I glued it in and sealed it up. So this is the interior, white pillow, gray covers, flat black seats, detailed instrument panel, black gauges with a uh, chrome bezel and I used a Molotow pen for that, the four spoke steering, window cranks, door handles, foot pedals, shifter, and they looks like air vents on the um, top of the dashboard. So I just want to show this to you before I sealed it up. And because this kit is similar to like a snap type, everything kind of slots in. So I kind of put the body onto the chassis just to see what it looks like. And the orange frame with the flat black body does look like a Harley Davidson themed truck, but also kind of looks like a Halloween prop or something. But anyway, the, um, bright red and flat black. Engine is in yellow. I put a blue filter. I think that's like a hydraulic fluid filter. And then the oil filter over here is red, blue shock absorber. So pretty colorful. That bright red frame. Wow. Okay, so um, I'll assemble everything together and be back. Here is the final product. Everything's done. I think it looks kind of nice. Now I remember why the truck reminds me of Halloween because if Count Dracula had a truck, this would be his truck. Because if you guys remember, um, Dracula's cape is black in his suit and then he's got like a red ribbon or the lining of the cape is red so that's the reason why this black and red reminds me of Dracula but anyway everything uh came together nicely um I like the way the toned down chrome looks against the flat black finish also want to tell you guys that um I actually had to spray a total of three coats of flat black because after my last recording I was coloring these door handles with Molotow uh, pen and it's a liquid chrome so what happened was I inadvertently grasped it by the uh, chrome and then I ended up smearing it and getting it over the rest of the body so I had to respray it a third time so the third time the coat didn't come out as good as the second time but anyway uh, it'll do so Everything's done, including the um, parking light or the marker light on the front fender. Um, I like every, the way everything came out. I used the decals for the Peterbilt emblem here, but this one I dry brushed it. That's why a little bit of the red smeared. But for the most part, I do like the way the chrome 
shines the uh, little pita belt. So at that part, I dry brush with red. So a little bit got smeared. But everything else I use a decal, so that's the decal. So everything is um, done. If I had to do it over again, because I ended up dulling all of the chrome parts, I should have used metallic aluminum paint instead of matte finish, because it would have been a little bit more consistent. I like the mud flaps with the uh, white decal, the rear tail lamps. I like the way that came out. Interior. Engine compartment. Unfortunately, no sun visor. But overall, typical of a Revell kit like my other um, Kenworth. W900 Aerodyne, low parts count, easy to put together. You could have probably not used glue on most of the parts, but I ended up using glue. And um, that's the final product. Again, similar where these wheels, sometimes they don't really sit that well. They don't seat that well because it's soft vinyl. But overall, I'm pleased with the flat finish. I'll include stills at the end of this video. One thing I want to point out was the rear wheels are not flat on the ground like the other ones, so it doesn't turn sometimes. So I don't know if it's because the frame is warped or maybe when I was gluing the axle, this one was higher and this one was lower. Um, also, the last time I um, sprayed the flat black finish, some of the mist got onto this window, so I used a Q-tip with um, mineral spirits, and I was able to get some of it off, but not the area close to the window frame, because then I would have removed the paint off the window frame. So, just want to point that out. You know, sometimes it doesn't come out perfect, there's always something wrong with it, but as long as I'm able to assemble them to the best of my ability, with the tools and resources I have in hand, it's very therapeutical and I get into a zen-like trance when I'm putting these together. So that's the reason why I assemble them. So hope you enjoy the video.